I'm not certain just what our experience will be on Judgment Day. Not everyone is viewing pornography or shirking marriage or having illicit sexual relationships. There is room for those with differing sexual attractions. I must say this son's sexual orientation did not somehow miraculously change. No one assumed it would. But then, no, in matters of discipleship, the church is not a fast food outlet. We can't always have it our way. I do see a couple of problems. One is the fact that I am the only person standing between you and the ice cream you always have ready at the close of General Conference. But the first great truth of all eternity is that God loves us with all of his heart, might, mind, and strength. They that wait upon him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. For the Lord God will hold their right hand, saying unto them, Fear not. I will help thee. Jeff, he said, however painful it is going to be for me to stand before God, I cannot bear the thought of standing before my mother. The gospel and her children meant everything to her. I have broken her heart. And that is breaking mine. We can escape the consequences of both sin and stupidity, our own or that of others. Wasn't it obvious then, and isn't it obvious now, that if I want fish, I can get fish? I need someone to feed my sheep and save my lambs. I need someone who loves me, truly, truly loves me. Peter, do you love me? Peter? But then, <laughs> that the Lord blesses those who want to improve, who accept the need for commandments and try to keep them, who cherish Christ-like virtues, that no love in mortality comes closer to approximating the pure love of Jesus Christ than the selfless love a devoted mother has for her child. How is it that a human being can love a child so deeply that you will willingly give up a major portion of your freedom for it. Here I ask your indulgence as I take some non-scriptural liberty in my portrayal of this exchange. Now, lest I be accused of proposing quixotic global social programs or of endorsing panhandling as a growth industry, I reassure you, I reassure you that my reverence for principles of industry, thrift, self-reliance, and ambition is as strong as that of any man or woman alive. When we hear professionals speak of neuroses and psychoses, of genetic predispositions and chromosome defects, of bipolarity and paranoia and schizophrenia. I am a vigorous advocate 
of square shoulders and positive thinking. Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, and Elder George Albert Smith. Downing another quart of pickle juice every time anyone around you has a happy moment. That's like trying to stuff a turkey through the beak. Let me be clear. Patiently enduring some things is part of our mortal education. But then, <laughs> heaven is cheering you on today, tomorrow, and forever. I can hardly read those words without weeping. To all of our mothers everywhere, past, present, or future, I say thank you. Thank you for giving birth, for shaping souls, for forming character. I have wept over the courage, integrity, and determination of this young man and his family. I have cried out in the fast. And truly, God has responded more than once. Here I am. Are we not all beggars? Don't we all cry out for help and hope and answers to prayers? Don't we all beg for forgiveness for mistakes we've made and troubles we've caused? Don't we all implore that grace will compensate for our weaknesses, that mercy will triumph over justice, at least in our case? And those who find relief at your hand will call your name blessed forever. When loved ones whom we knew to have disabilities in mortality will stand before us glorified and grand, breathtakingly perfect in body and mind. Nor do I even know how the poor feel. Minds can be healed just the way broken bones and broken hearts are healed while God is at work making those repairs, the rest of us can help by being merciful, non-judgmental, and kind. The Lord said the poor would one day see the kingdom of God coming to deliver them in power and great glory. Hold fast to what you already know and stand strong until additional knowledge comes. The size of your faith or the degree of your knowledge is not the issue. It is the integrity you demonstrate toward the faith you do have. We are not diminished when someone else is added upon. We're not in a race against each other to see who's the wealthiest or the most talented or the most beautiful or even the most blessed. The race we are really in is the race against sin. So please do not hyperventilate if from time to time issues arise that need to be examined, understood, and resolved. They do and they will. In this church, what we know will always trump what we do not know. Brother Holland, I can't say yet that I know the church is true, but I believe it is. I hugged that boy until his eyes bulged out. I told him with all the fervor of my soul that belief is a precious word, an even more precious act, and he need never apologize for, quote, only believing, close quote. I told him that Christ himself said, be not afraid, only believe. So slow down, rest up, replenish and refill, hope on, journey on. 
honestly acknowledge your questions and your concerns, but first and forever fan the flame of your faith. It underscores the thought I heard many years ago that surely the thing God enjoys most about being God is the thrill of being merciful. And just as Brigham Young saw an angel standing over this place, so do I see angels standing in it. But that's how I see them, mortal messengers with angelic messages. Men and women who have all the physical and financial and family difficulties you and I have, but who with faith have consecrated their lives to the callings that have come to them and the duty to preach God's word, not their own. President Harold B. Lee put it best years ago when he said, apparently the gospel is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And the great thing about the gospel is we get credit for trying even if we don't always succeed. What was gentle in the lowlands of initial loyalty becomes deeply strenuous and very demanding at the summit of true discipleship. What was once a tiny seed of belief for me has grown into the tree of life. So if your faith is a little tested in this or any season, I invite you to lean on mine. I am more certain that those keys have been restored and those ordinances are once again available through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints than I am certain that I stand before you at this pulpit and you sit before me in this conference. We will never look back. We will never look back. Don't delay. It's getting late. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. What a stunning reminder.